currently filling up the truck. Hundred dollars every time. Golly. All right, so I literally just came back from grocery shopping. I am um, picking up the old lady tonight from the airport. Gonna spend some quality time at the house. I um, I don't know. This is an old video. I know I'm super late, but. I rewatched this um, sumo wrestler. His name is Biam Biamba. Um, yeah, and I, it's a super old video. I think it's like either Vice TV or something like that. I don't know. One of those. Anyway, he was making chankonabi, and I have always wanted to try chankonabi. For those of you who don't know, chankonabi is basically a soup concoction full of like proteins and vegetables and uh, broth, etc. And I've always wanted to try it. So I went to the grocery store and I bought a whole bunch of ingredients, whether it's going to turn out the same and um, good or bad. I don't really know because I've never had chankonabi. So I'm super excited about it. Um, just getting myself organized here so I could start chopping up everything. But yeah. Let's see if this clamp works. Oh yeah, got a clamp on the table. Woo! So I got some pork here. Again, it has a whole bunch of ingredients. some bread and again I'm trying to like wean off of energy drinks but like it's super difficult and I'm failing at that so anyway every time I go to the grocery store I spend on coffee grounds um, that I'll probably not even drink but I really do need to get on that but, continuing on here, got some cabbage, Chinese cabbage here. I got some uh, ground chicken for the like little meatballs that you put in there. I'm actually very excited about this. Hopefully it turns out good. Carrots. I also got a bigger pot that I could certainly use. I got a strainer. A whole bunch of random things. Another type of strainer. Uh, some dry seaweed that I'm going to put in the pot. A mix of mushrooms. Spring onions, of course. It says to add miso, so I'm gonna try that. Got some tofu, firm. I'm not really a big tofu guy. I don't really know the difference in textures, really. But I got the firm one. Some cornstarch for the meatballs. Sesame oil. Soy sauce, though I think I have plenty of soy sauce. And kimchi. It's not part of the dish, but I'm always a big fan of kimchi. My best friend back home is Korean. And practically that's what I was raised on. Kimchi is great, of course. Bulgogi. Always ate that. Those, um... The keem from, you know, the seaweed paper or whatever, those are always good. My favorite Korean dish though, this is a side, of course the chankonabi is Japanese, but speaking of like back home and my best friend and whatnot, 
Korean wise, my favorite Korean dish is sundubu. Sundubu. It's like an egg soupy dish thing. It's super good. You eat that with like rice. Ugh. That's probably something I need to learn how to make too. Maybe one day. But a whole bunch of chicken bones that I need to make the broth with. Hopefully that will turn out. A whole bunch of stuff. Golly. More coffee beans. I got this from the self-serve aisle. It's like Bavarian hazelnut, so that's something I'm gonna try too. Whole bunch of garlic, daikon, onions, and ginger. Just taking all this out of the bag right now. I tell you, every time I go to MT, of course they never give you bags. I went to an HEB off of Palmer, Palmer. Um, and they didn't give me bags either, which I'm kind of upset about. What kind of world do we live in right now? Um, usually the one off of Pecan and the big super HEB over there and Hutto uh, gives you bags. But anyway, I got a bag from MT. This is where we usually go. Um, do our grocery shopping for like Asian stuff. Um, you know, there's plenty of other places here in the Texas Austin area for those who are of the Orient and not from around the area. We have MT Supermarket. Uh, we have 99 Ranch. Uh, we have H Mart. Hana World, which is also on Palmer. Um, the H Mart is more in Cedar Park. 99 Ranch is closer to downtown. And MT Supermarket's right off of Lamar. Um, but yeah, we usually go here. Uh, 99 Ranch is okay. That's a second option. Hana World, we only get a few items or so. Um, maybe just like the um, Korean barbecue meats. And then H Mart is on the bottom of the list, not gonna lie. Um, it's really just the vibes at H Mart. There's a lot of snooty people. <laughs> anyway, um, what else did I get? Oh, this is just another bag. So another thing to note, um, again, I'm picking up uh, the old lady from the airport today. She's bringing back Riley, one of our dogs, um, who we initially gave away to a, um, a family member, but she decided it wasn't a good fit for her. So Riley is coming back home. Um, yeah, and that'll be tonight, and we have, we still have a whole bunch of puppies coming very soon. I still don't know how I'm going to, or in what way I am going to, um, share this with everyone, especially on YouTube, etc., but of course I'm gonna make it non-graphic and um, very clean, if you will. Um, so super excited, we're just gonna have a lot of puppies. Jesus, Lord have mercy. Um, so two dogs are pregnant. Um, we have two girls who are currently carrying. It is Daisy, our, um, God, I forgot what kind of dog they are. It'll come to me. It's like a lab mix, um, Pyrenees, there it is. And um, the small little terriers, um, 
Her name is Penny. She's having puppies as well. So it's gonna be a lot going on in this house. But anyway, oh. I got hooked on these because a coworker of mine, Ate Janice, hello. Um, she got me on these butternut, um, butter coconut cookies, super good. Um, it's like a, I don't know, it's, it has a sweetness, it has a, it's just a standard cracker cookie, whatever, but it's so delicious, especially in the morning. When you have a cup of coffee with it and you just dip it in the coffee, it's like a, um, what are those things called? Biscottis. My dad's super big on uh, those types of things like biscottis and whatnot. He'll buy them wholesale and or make his own and he'll have a whole ritual in the mornings where he is, you know, enjoying his little breakfast time. But anyway, I'm gonna get everything organized. Just hang out with me. We're gonna be chopping up some things. I'll probably put on the uh, the head cam or the head mount, and you're basically just gonna chill. <laughs> All right. Let's start off with these. Of course, gotta wash everything. Just gotta chop them up, do a rough chop. See how everything goes. Pretty sure that's a good amount of ingredients to put into the chankonabi, or the vegetables anyway. Of course, I'm going to add some tofu. Can't forget that. And I guess I'm going to start working on the chicken broth. All right. So, right now, I'm just prepping the stuff for the broth. Um, I'm waiting for the water in the pot to boil. And then I'm gonna blanch the chicken bones. And then, whoa, why is it doing that? Um, then I will make the broth, add all these ingredients, and let it sit for like 
two, two and a half hours. And then we're gonna add everything else. And we are blanching away. All right, so got everything in there. Gotta start letting that uh, marinate. And you know, do its magic for several hours. All right, so now I think I'm gonna get started on the little chicken ball things. Um, just need to find myself some sort of mixing bowl. Trying to decide. I guess I could just put it in here. You know, the thing about cooking at home is that once you're done your adventurous uh, little thing here, then, of course, you have to clean up after yourself and do the dishes, which is always the worst part. Looks pretty good. Those chicken ball things look amazing. Can't wait to try that. All right, so I'm back on. I got a new battery and I had to charge it. Again, I don't know what happened to my other battery. I thought I was charging it, but anyway, on my way to the airport, gotta pick up the love boat. Um, and Riley, Riley's back, as I was saying earlier. Oh man. Come on, mount. There it is. Again, after I publish this video, I'm gonna go down to uh, 1080p, 60 frames per second. So I try to save as much battery as I can. For those of you who know about, I, I want to tell y'all about an annoying thing that I find annoying with the GoPro mod. So for those who have, you know, the GoPro media mod, um, you know, it has the clip on that you could clip to the actual GoPro. And it has a plug-in spot uh, where the microphone is, etc. But the clip is on the opposite side. Um, and when you try to mount it up, like the screw or whatever is on the microphone side I'm trying to, I'm going to have to like explain it some other way, but I hope you guys are understanding. But yeah, the clip is on like the opposite side. So <clears throat> you open up the clip first. Well, no, you got to unscrew it first, take everything off, uh, put the flaps back down and then unclip it and then pull it out and then change the battery. Once you change the battery, you put it back in, you clip it back on. Um, and then you pull the flaps back up and then you screw it back onto your mount or whatever. Um, it's not really accessible or quick and easy to, um, you know, straight up change a battery when, um, when you want to, which kind of sucks. And like you have to take off the media mod itself just to change the battery I wish that uh, <clears throat> I wish that everything was on the clip side where you could just pop open the clip change the battery not even have to um, remove the media mod itself from the GoPro not even take it off the mount you can just easily 
unclip the um, media mod and then slide in a new battery and then you're good to go. So, I mean, it's a little tedious and not necessarily quick to change up the battery and whatnot, but it is what it is. Super happy with the GoPro. I, you know, again, I'm still back and forth with, um, you know, wanting to use the phone to record versus a GoPro. Because, you know, with the GoPro, you have to, you know, transfer all the files to a little micro USB and then upload it to your computer. As for the phone, you could easily have an app that you could just start adding videos to that you recorded with the phone and then straight up export it just like that. And it's quick and easy. And that's what I did for South Padre last year. And, you know, I was pushing out videos um, and content like super quickly. But, um, whatever. <laughs> All right. Again, on the way to the airport, picking up um, the old lady and uh, Riley. So that's going to be interesting. I guess the other dogs haven't seen Riley in like, I don't know, how long has it been since Riley left us? Maybe half a year, six months or so. And of course, the dogs at home always miss their mama. So, yeah. Oh, so, you know, I thought I'd add in this um, catalog of videos just a few announcements. Um, sorry. Change lanes real quick. Yeah, just a few announcements. Um, so my label required noise. Right now, we're working on um, moving into a different music distribution service. So starting June 1st, that's this coming Wednesday, uh, depending on when I will be um, posting this video. But yeah, starting June 1st, uh, we're going to be removing all music from major streaming platforms. Um, right now, we're working with DistroKid, so, um, and we, the main reason why we want to move and myself I want to move all the music to a different uh, music distributor <clears throat> is really because I feel that DistroKid at this point um, just doesn't serve enough for me so and you know goals with the label in, include like building a greater community um, having artists part of the label um, to release their own music um, and just creates like a own little niche of uh, techno artists so you know really just to expand and um, continue to uh, reach um, you know, greater distances with uh, music and uh, techno as a therapeutic uh, avenue for mental health. So, what I really hope to find in a new distributor is really, and this is what I'm looking for, is label services. Uh, label services which include um, accounting, um, I want a label that's, you know, that automatically, like, calculates all the royalties and stuff like that. My main goal is to, um, 
you know, email different artists, whether it be here in Austin or across overseas, to just be like, hey, um, I love what you're doing. I love your music. Um, would you be interested in uh, releasing some music on our label? Um, and, you know, I will have them send in some demos. I could check out their music, see what I like, whatever. Um, and then the, just go from there and um, they'll allow me to just release their music under uh, my own label, which is super cool. Um, you know, with DistroKid right now, it doesn't have that type of service that will be able to you know, do all the math, calculate all the royalties, etc. Um, I currently have the, I think the artist plan, which is only like two artists, unlimited amount of uploads. Um, but that's not to say like, DistroKid is, DistroKid is, oh God, I can't even speak. DistroKid is great, especially starting out. Um, I have no, quorum with this distro kid whatsoever um, I enjoyed it very much it's a budget friendly uh, quick and easy um, avenue to distribute your music quickly um, and it's a simple fix I mean you just upload your stuff and then bam a couple of weeks later whenever you decide to release it it's online so it's super cool um, don't get me wrong, but again, I just, for me um, and my goals, it's really just to, um, you know, go further a little bit. Um, so yeah, if anybody has any suggestions um, on what music distributors, uh, you know, they like, um, yeah, shoot me a comment, send me a message, etc. Uh, right now, I'm currently looking in, we're currently looking into Label uh, Engine. Um, it's a company based out of, I think, California. Um, so, again, back to what I was saying, uh, June 1st, I'm going to be really, or removing all of the catalog from, um, you know, online streaming services, but... Uh, we will still continue to distribute and advertise and market on SoundCloud and Bandcamp. Um, for those of you who have been following me, I'm a big fan of Bandcamp. Um, so those two channels for sure. Um, and then, you know, stay tuned. Uh, follow, like, and subscribe so that way you can stay up to date with everything um, and where we're going to go next. Uh, also, um, another reason why I want to move distributors, uh, to switch distributors, is because, and again, this this may seem superficial, um, and it's very minute details, uh, but, so when you release music under DistroKid, um, let's take, for example, um, I don't know, one of the big electronic uh, uh, stores, uh, Beatport. So with Beatport, you release under DistroKid, you're paying the $10 a month just to release on Beatport itself, which is cool. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Um, well, you know, to many it can be. Uh, but... When you re when DistroKid releases the music to Beatport <clears throat> under the label section, like you know, it has tabs to categorize, um, like the artist name, the title of the music, and then it has label. And under the label, it says DistroKid. So, to me, that's kind of annoying. Um, not necessarily annoying, but. I don't think it uh, puts uh, my business and our label in front of um, what is being advertised. So 
again I want to be able to have a distribution company to be able to work with a distribution company that will you know put on beatport like bam beatport what was the label required noise oh let's check that out and then bam there's the whole catalog so that that's exactly that's another thing that um, that's like a an itch uh, for me right now so but again you know district kid is something that I have no quorums with really um, I think it's great for uh, beginning artists etc um, but yeah I, I honestly just think it's uh, time to move to a different um, different path I guess here at the Austin Bergstrom Airport you know, there's one thing that I don't really like about the airport, especially the cell phone lot. When you're driving around a big truck, golly, it feels like the lanes are just like small. I need to go on a vacation. Every time I go to the airport, everybody's going places. You know, D, you know how DJs, especially traveling DJs, touring DJs, etc. Could you imagine all the fees that they have to pay, whatever, unless they, you know, have their own private jet or whatever. My golly, they must be dropping on fees and whatnot. You know, packing it, especially like. You know, artists with a whole bunch of equipment. Where is she? Come on, man. See, this is why I don't be going. You gotta time it perfectly. Because then when they're not here, you're all jacked up because. You gotta circle around again. I ain't trying to circle around. Where are you? Come on, lady. Currently waiting and waiting. straight on the crosswalk too yeah, they can't have nothing nice come on lady where are you all you gotta do is get in an escalator or elevator or whatever and bring it on little trick of the trade you know in the mornings it's pretty awful to try to um, go on departures because you know everybody's leaving on an early flight um, and then in the evenings arrivals down below is a nightmare because everybody's arriving so it's always better to flip-flop it especially like if it's the evening and you're picking up somebody tell them to go upstairs to departures so that way it's a quicker uh, getaway little 
tidbits, words of advice. She, I don't even know where she is. Get, that's why we don't have nice things. We don't get it together. Get it together. Next thing you know, some TSA agent or some patrol guy got to tell me to move. been around my I've been around airports my whole life dad worked for the airline my brother works for the airline been flying since I was born like flew every year somewhere especially going to the Philippines and whatnot as an adult not so much I don't really care for flying in general I think you you miss out on a lot of what like a country has to offer when you fly like for instance I would rather take a drive from here to New Orleans or something like that like a place I've never been rather than um, take a flight out there just because you miss out on a lot of what the country has to offer. There's plenty of cool spots and um, places that aren't advertised a lot. So, um, yeah, I prefer driving. That's just my thing. But of course, if you need to go somewhere quickly, then that's a different story. If this lady don't hurry up, Ali, get it together. Where are you? Where are you? Oh. She said, I'll be at the end. I didn't even hear my phone go off. She just te she texted me. Eight minutes ago. I'm going to be at the end towards Delta. Though she took Alaska, which makes no dang sense. Golly. Miscommunication. communication oh an old lady walking that's cute I love me some old people old people are fun they have no filter they say what they want and they don't even care I love old people gonna sleep with mommy and daddy tonight huh how are you gonna sleep with us tonight you gotta be good I heard you're good Woo! Mm. how was your flight she was good she was knocked out the whole time I zonked her oh dang you zonked her zonked means uh, you know her CBD treats. CBD treats that you get. You know, it's legal. You get it at the uh, Pets Bar or whatever. For the dogs. For travel. I'm vlogging. Oh. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> Hi, baby. You did good. Well, she's clean. Hopefully, we'll keep her that way for a little she while. She needs a haircut. 
She looks like an old auntie. <laughs> right? You noticed the two, right? Yeah. You know, the old school un Asian aunties with the perms, Happy. the short hair perms. You can have chocolate. You have treats there. I'll give you a good treat for being good. Hey, baby. Hi, baby. You miss us, huh? You miss us? All right, so trying the chakanabi that I made today. I've tasted the broth already. It's been pretty good. Yes. Again, I don't have a lot to compare it to, but what I made so far, pretty good. One day I'll try the real stuff. All right, good morning. Sorry, it's like super dim in here. I just got back home from work. Um, I'm pretty much just gonna end off this video here. And uh, yeah, until next time, as always, be happy, stay safe, and be easy. Cheers.